girls? I'm Mima. Who said that? Welcome to Mima's classroom. Who said that? Today we're going to be practicing summary writing. What are we going to be practicing? If you said summary writing, you are correct. So let's get started. Okay, boys and girls, the video you have been waiting for. This is the video on summary writing. What is a summary? You should have your summary page. Let's read along. A summary is a short retelling of the main ideas of a selection. It must be paraphrased. That means put into your own words. Only the most important ideas or events will be included. In literature, Visualize the character moving through the story. So that's the first step. I want you to visualize the character moving through the story. State the main events that relate to the plot. So remember, boys and girls, you're not going to include descriptive details or unimportant events, only the main events that relate to the plot. Follow the steps below. Remember, the main character is usually trying to overcome an obstacle. It could be a problem or a challenge. So, in writing a summary, you want to visualize the character moving through the story, and you want to state only the main events. Here is a little format to help you do that. First, start with this sentence frame. You have the title of your story, is a story about, and then the main character, who, and then the main idea, or the plot. Okay. So, number two says, begin with transitional words such as first, then, and finally. Now, you don't have to use first, then, or finally, but these three words signal the beginning, the middle, and the end of the story, so they can help you out with that. Also, number three, remember, your summary will be much shorter than the original piece because you are choosing only the main ideas and you're putting them into your own words. And finally, number four, make sure it follows the same order of the story. For this lesson, we are going to choose The Tale of Peter Rabbit by Beatrix Potter. You need to have read this already once on your own, so if you haven't, go ahead and pause the video and read it once on your own. Now that you've read it once on your own, we are going to go through this story paragraph by paragraph visualizing the main character and we already know that the main character is Peter and you've read this story once through already so you already know that Peter does a few things in this story. Let's start with the first paragraph. Once upon a time in a deep wood there lived a family of bunnies. Their names were Flopsy, Mopsy, Cottontail, and Peter. One sunny spring morning, Mother Rabbit decided to go to the market and get some ingredients for dinner. I must run an errand this morning, children, said Mother. I need some flour and cream for tonight's biscuits. Now run along and pick some nice juicy currants. Remember, stay out of Mr. McGregor's garden, Mother warned. Father had an accident there, and Mrs. McGregor put him in a stew. Now, boys and girls, let's think about how we would summarize that first paragraph. So we know from our summary page we need to visualize the character moving through the story. So when I close my eyes the only thing I see is Mother Rabbit talking to the four bunnies. That's all I see. There's no movement of the main character of Peter. Now, Mother Rabbit does warn Peter to stay out of the garden, and I think that is important, but it is only important as it relates to Peter and what he does. Let's move on and see what Peter does. Paragraph 2. Now, Flopsy, Mopsy, and Cottontail were good little bunnies. They always obeyed their mother, so they grabbed their baskets and away they scampered to pick berries along the path. Peter, on the contrary, was a mischievous little bunny who delighted in taking risks. 
he headed straight toward Mr. McGregor's garden. So here's Peter's first action. He headed straight towards Mr. McGregor's garden means that he went to Mr. McGregor's garden. That's the first thing he does. He squeezed under the gate and into the carrot patch. His mouth began to water as he spied the carrot greens. Directly, he sampled the carrots. From there, he filled his belly with crisp, juicy lettuce. Finally, he began nibbling on the sweet red strawberries and ran right into Mr. McGregor's boat. So let's stop right there. Now as I visualize this story, remember, let's go back. Let's go back to our summary page. Remember, I'm visualizing the character moving through the story and I'm stating only the main events. So as I visualize Peter, I see that he goes into the garden and he begins eating. So he's done two things so far. He went into the garden, he began eating, and he also ran into Mr. McGregor. So that's actually three things that he's done so far. So let's read on. Mr. McGregor reached down and grabbed Peter by the ears, but Peter escaped just in time. So we are only concerned in what Peter's doing. So Peter escaped. Who did Peter escape from? Peter escaped from Mr. McGregor. A chase ensued and Mr. McGregor pursued Peter all over the garden. Growing weary, Peter knew he had to find a safe place to hide. He ran into a tool shed and leaped into a watering can. To Peter's dismay, it was filled with water. Mr. McGregor noticed Pe Peter scampering into the tool shed and followed him. Looking all around and turning over flower pot after flower pot, he could not find Peter. Mr. McGregor gave up the search and returned to his gardening. So if I visualize Peter in my mind, I see Peter go into the garden, begin eating the crops, he runs into Mr. McGregor's boot. He runs away from Mr. McGregor and hides in a watering can. So that's what we have so far. Now let's move on to the next paragraph. Now Peter, knowing it would not be safe to come out until dusk, decided to wait patiently for a safe moment he could escape. Peter decided to wait for a moment when he could escape. As the sun began to set, Peter hopped out of the watering can cold and damp. Ashamed at disobeying his mother's orders, he hopped home, sneezing and shivering. So now I can visualize Peter in a watering can and waiting till the sun goes down and now he hops home cold and wet. Let's read on. As he approached the cozy little hollow tree, the smell of freshly baked currant biscuits wafted under his nose. His mother stood at the entrance waiting to greet him. Where have you been? his mother asked. We need to dry you off and put you directly to bed. No currant biscuits for you. Peter knew his mother was right. Peter knew his mother was right. He obediently dried off and got into bed. He drank his chamomile tea and as Peter drifted into a peaceful slumber, he resolved. He drank his chamomile tea, and as Peter drifted into a peaceful slumber, that means Peter went to sleep, he resolved never to trespass in Mr. McGregor's garden again. First, I'm going to title this summary. Now, what is the first thing I do? I start with this sentence frame. The title is a story about character who blanked. Now, one thing I notice about this story is that the author tells us that Peter is a mischievous little bunny 
And then it tells us here in the second to the last paragraph, ashamed at disobeying his mother. So this is a story of a mischievous little bunny who disobeys his mother, goes into the garden, which his mother told him not to do, and gets into trouble. So I'm going to use this sentence frame to help me start my summary. So first I write the title, The Tale of Peter Rabbit. The Tale of Peter Rabbit, now let me use my sentence frame, is a story about a bunny named Peter. The Tale of Peter Rabbit is a story about a bunny named Peter. And now the main idea. So I'm going to state my main idea as the tale of Peter Rabbit, and I'm going to underline this because that's the title of the story. The tale of Peter Rabbit is a story about a bunny named Peter who disobeys his mother Now, you can add, and gets into trouble if you like, but I'm just going to leave it as at that. Now, what does Peter do first? First, Peter goes into Mr. McGregor's garden, which his mother told him not to do. And I think it's important to include that his mother told him not to do that. First, Peter goes into... Mr. McGregor's garden, which his mother told him not to do. Okay, so he goes into the garden. Now what does he do? He begins eating the fruits and vegetables. In our own words, we can say, then he begins eating Mr. McGregor's fruits and vegetables. Then he begins eating Mr. McGregor's fruits and vegetables. Then what happens? Now he encounters Mr. McGregor. Next, Peter bumps into Mr. McGregor and gets chased throughout the garden. Next, Peter bumps into Mr. McGregor and gets chased throughout the garden. Notice we included Mr. McGregor in our summary, but we only want to include him as he affects the behavior of Peter. So Mr. McGregor chasing Peter is an important event because Peter runs throughout the garden looking for a place to hide because of it. What happens while he's getting chased? Next he needs to find a place to hide. And where does he hide? He hides in the watering can. So we can say quickly, Peter hides in a watering can until it is safe to come out. Quick, 
quickly, Peter hides in a watering can until it is safe to come out. And when he did finally come out, he hopped home cold and wet and went straight to bed. So we can use our transitional word finally. Finally, he returns home and his mother puts him straight to bed. Or we can say, and his mother puts him to bed without dinner. And his mother puts him straight to bed, whichever you prefer. Now let's go back and review the summary. Visualize the character moving through the story. We did that. State the main events that relate to the plot. Now remember, boys and girls, when it said that he went through the garden and he ate carrots and he ate lettuce and he ate strawberries, we turned those three events into one single event by saying he went into the garden and ate fruits and vegetables. We used our sentence starter with the main idea. We use transitional words. Our summary is much shorter than the original piece and we followed the same order as the story. So let's go back and read our summary. The Tale of Peter Rabbit is a story about a bunny named Peter who disobeys his mother. First, Peter goes into Mr. McGregor's garden, which his mother told him not to do. Then, he begins eating Mr. McGregor's fruits and vegetables. Next, Peter bumps into Mr. McGregor and gets chased throughout the garden. Quickly, Peter hides in a watering can until it is safe to come out. Finally, he returns home and his mother puts him straight to bed. Now, boys and girls, you can color the borders of your summary page and trim it and put it in your interactive notebook as a guide for future summaries. And I always like to also glue in one example so that I can go back and review it when I go to write my next summary. You can then color your borders and trim the story and glue in your Tale of Peter Rabbit story. And then on the opposite page, you have your summary. Notice that I've highlighted my transitional words just to remind myself to use those transitional words. Boys and girls, I hope you enjoyed today's lesson on summary writing. Don't forget to join me again for another lesson in Mima's classroom. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah.